tiny, only about 1.5 inches long and so light that a breeze could blow it away. Yet every year, an estimated 400 billion matches are produced from logs thick enough to wrap your arms around, harvested from temperate forests around the world. From veneer sheet shaved to just show point or four inch thick, machines slice hundreds of thousands of sticks every hour. Those fragile wooden slivers then move through a long chain of treatments that ultimately create the small flame used in everyday life and in industry. But few people realize that behind a spark that flashes for barely half a second, once stood an entire global industry with more than 600 factories in operation. Today, we follow the journey that transforms a three-foot log into the instant when a match head ignites, revealing how behind that tiny point of light, an entire world of silent, precise engineering comes to life. The story of the match stretches back thousands of years, born from humanity's desire to create fire more quickly and more safely, from the sulfur-coated fire sticks of 6th century China to the friction matches and later safety matches developed in Europe during the 17th century. The breakthrough that separated red phosphorus from the match head turned this tiny tool into a worldwide essential, small and inexpensive, yet deeply transformative in how people cooked, lit their homes, and carried out daily life. There was a time when matches formed a million-dollar market supported by more than 600 factories operating across the globe. With low-cost raw materials and steady demand, matches built a value chain that stretched from timber harvesting to manufacturing, packaging, and distribution. And in many developing nations, hundreds of billions of matches are still used every year, keeping this industry economically relevant, a product that remains humble in size, yet remarkably enduring through time. The opening stage of the entire process begins in the forest, where only trees between 20 and 30 years old, straight trunked and nearly flawless, are selected for harvesting. These are the ideal characteristics for producing matchsticks with the strength and uniformity required for mass production. The selection depends not only on age but also on the quality of the grain, ensuring that every log brought back has a stable structure, flexible fibers, and enough durability to withstand all the steps that follow. On the tree-covered hillsides, harvesting teams move toward each trunk that has been pre-selected based on age, straightness, and grain quality. An industrial chainsaw is secured firmly against the wood, operating with low vibration so that the cut remains smooth and does not cause hidden fractures. Each tree is then felled along a calculated path to prevent it from striking rocks or neighboring trunks. Once it rests safely on the ground, the log is sectioned, its branches removed, and the trunk divided into pieces roughly three feet long, which is the optimal size for transport and later processing. These log segments are loaded onto specialized vehicles equipped with clamping arms that hold the wood firmly in place, preventing bouncing, rolling, or impact during transit. Throughout the journey to the factory, both humidity and temperature are continuously monitored to ensure the wood does not crack, warp, or lose its natural elasticity. As a result, the raw material arrives with uniform grain quality, fully preserved for the downstream stages of match production. As the logs leave the plantation, they still retain the natural moisture locked within their fibers. However, once they are stacked at the factory, improper handling can cause them to dry too quickly, crack, and lose their inherent elasticity. For that reason, the log yard functions not only as a storage area, but also as a resting station for the raw material. Here, the wood is periodically misted or lightly watered to maintain a stable moisture level and prevent deformation during storage. These spraying systems do more than wet the surface. They help equalize moisture between the core and the bark, reducing the risk of splitting and inhibiting the growth of insects or mold. From a distance, the yard resembles a massive reserve with thousands of logs arranged in clearly defined layers. This careful preservation ensures that each piece of wood maintains its original quality, providing the stability and strength needed before it enters the industrial processing cycle. After the logs are softened, each one is moved to the primary cutting area, 
where it is divided into sections ranging from 3.3 to 8.5 feet in length, depending on the size of the veneer sheets required. Before cutting, the log is secured in place and scanned with a laser system or checked with a mechanical gauge to determine the optimal length, maximizing usable wood while removing areas with large knots or hidden cracks. A high-powered saw blade then descends to trim both ends perfectly flat and square to the trunk's axis. This smooth perpendicular surface allows the log to grip firmly onto the spindle of the peeling machine. Even a slight angular deviation can cause vibration or slippage during rotation. Once the ends are inspected with a square gauge and confirmed to meet standards, the sections are sent directly onto the conveyor to prepare for the veneer peeling stage. After the rough wood has gone through its initial preparation, it is fed into a rounding lathe to stabilize its shape. Here, each log segment is firmly clamped, rotated evenly around its axis, and brought into contact with a specialized cutting blade. The machine removes any remaining bark, smooths the surface, and adjusts the diameter to the required specification. Thanks to a steady rotation speed and carefully controlled pressure, the finished billets come out uniformly round, free from cracks, and with the smooth finish needed for downstream processing. These rounded billets then move into the veneer cutting machine. As the rotating knife presses against the surface, the wood is peeled into continuous thin layers, forming veneer sheets between 0.02 and 0.08 inch thick. A consistent cutting speed and a razor-sharp blade allow each sheet to maintain even thickness along its full length, minimizing warping and preserving a seamless wood grain. From these veneer sheets, the cutting system divides them into narrow, uniformly straight slats that form the raw bodies of matchsticks. Each slat must remain smooth and structurally coherent to ensure mechanical stability during the chemical treatment stages that follow. To maintain this level of uniformity, modern factories integrate sensors that continuously track key parameters along the line, from cutting speed to wood moisture allowing the machinery to self-adjust and preserve consistent quality across the millions of matchsticks produced each day. The thin veneer sheets, once peeled from the logs, are stacked in neat layers to stabilize their surface before entering the slat cutting machine. They are then fed into the cutter, where each sheet is divided into narrow strips with fixed dimensions. As the veneer passes through a set of parallel blades aligned with precision gauges, Every cut remains straight, clean, and free of torn fibers or fractured grain. The machine's drive system maintains a steady feed rate, while the clamping mechanism secures both edges of the veneer to prevent vibration during cutting. With the combination of sharp blades, stable speed, and firm clamping pressure, every wooden strip is produced with precise width and straightness. The result is a uniform set of clean, seamless slats fully prepared for the next step in the manufacturing process. Right after the cutting stage, the wooden slats are still moist, soft, and highly prone to warping. They are carefully sorted before being fed into an industrial dryer, where a steady stream of hot air maintained between 140 and 176 degrees Fahrenheit gradually pulls out excess moisture, reducing the humidity to below 10%. The heated air circulates evenly through the layers of sticks, keeping the temperature consistent to prevent bending or cracking. The drying process lasts only a few minutes, yet it is absolutely critical. By the end of it, the wood becomes noticeably stronger and rigid enough to withstand the heat of ignition without splitting. These slender matchsticks, only 1.5 to 2 inches long, would easily snap if left untreated. To strengthen their structure, each stick is dipped into paraffin, a type of wax that ignites easily yet remains highly stable. The paraffin coating reinforces the wood, reducing breakage during handling or transport, while also extending the burn time and keeping the flame steady even in a light breeze. At the same time, a parallel process begins inside the chemical preparation area, where the components of the match head are carefully blended to create a mixture that ignites quickly and burns with stability. The primary ingredients typically include an oxidizing agent, such as potassium chlorate, to drive the combustion reaction, sulfur or another fuel to sustain the flame, 
powdered glass to increase friction during striking, and a small amount of water-based binder to anchor the mixture onto the wooden tip. Some formulations may include color pigments or adjusted ratios tailored to climate conditions, wood characteristics, or the specific safety requirements of different markets. All of the materials are precisely measured and transferred into a sealed mixing tank, where slow-speed paddles operate in intermittent cycles. This gentle motion allows the mixture to reach an ideal paste-like consistency without creating air bubbles or causing the ingredients to separate. Sensors embedded inside the tank constantly track temperature, viscosity, and uniformity, ensuring that each batch remains stable before it is put into use. Once completed, the mixture is kept in a semi-liquid state, thick enough to hold its form, yet fluid enough to coat the stick tips without dripping. This stage is fundamental to match quality, for even a minor deviation in the formulation can lead to off-center burning, small pops during ignition, or a match that simply fails to light. As soon as the chemical mixture reaches the required stability, the trays of matchsticks are moved into the semi-automatic dipping system. Each tray holds hundreds of neatly arranged, vertically aligned wooden sticks, positioned precisely for the brief but most critical moment in the entire manufacturing process. The lift mechanism slowly lowers the tray into the dipping tank, where the chemical solution is maintained at a constant level through pressure sensors and a closed recirculation pump. Each stick is dipped only a few millimeters, just enough for the tip to lightly submerge into the surface layer, allowing the mixture to coat evenly without dripping down the shaft. The dipping time is exact, often just a few seconds. A mixture that is too thick creates an uneven coating that may crack or burn off center. A mixture that is too thin fails to adhere properly, causing match heads to flake or refuse to ignite. For this reason, every dipping batch is tightly controlled, from the lowering speed of the tray to the solution's temperature and even the surface settling during the entire cycle. When the tray is lifted back up, each stick emerges with a small, smooth, slightly glossy cap, uniform and rounded, like an unactivated ignition dome. At this stage, the chemical coating is still wet and extremely sensitive to friction or impact, so the entire tray is immediately secured, ready to move into the next phase of shape stabilization and drying. After the chemical dipping stage, the match heads are still soft and extremely susceptible to deformation. To stabilize their shape, the trays of sticks are mounted onto a rotating drying rack that moves slowly inside a sealed, ventilated chamber. With each rotation, thousands of matchsticks pass repeatedly through horizontal streams of dry air, allowing the chemical coating to evaporate gradually without experiencing thermal shock. Throughout the process, sensors monitor airflow speed, temperature, and humidity in real time. After drying, each tray of matchsticks is moved to the final inspection area. Skilled workers carefully examine every row, looking for flaws in shape, color, or the structure of the match head. They search for small but critical signs, cracked coating, off-center heads, raised edges, or slight peeling. Any defective stick is removed by hand or with a small wooden pick, without disturbing the rest. Though it is the last step, this stage demands intense focus. Even minor defects, an uneven head, a fractured coating, or a peeling edge can cause a match to burn irregularly or fail to ignite. Thanks to the trained eyes of these experienced workers, only the highest quality sticks are kept, ensuring consistency across the entire production batch. While the match sticks are being processed and inspected, a separate production line operates in parallel to manufacture the boxes. Though made from thin cardboard, a matchbox must be lightweight moisture-resistant, and rigid enough to protect the highly flammable match heads inside. For that reason, the material is typically a thin laminated carton with consistent thickness. The process begins by flattening and printing large sheets of board with logos, warnings, and market-specific graphics. The sheets then pass through a die-cutting machine, which stamps them into flat box templates complete with fold lines and glue tabs. These templates move into an automated folding and gluing system, where robotic arms crease each edge along the preset lines and secure the structure using water-based adhesive or rapid heat bonding. Some production lines add a pressure-forming step 
to ensure the box remains square and holds its shape reliably. In parallel, the inner tray, the sliding core of the matchbox, is also formed from thin board and folded into a hollow rectangular insert built to precise dimensions. The outer shell and inner tray are produced separately and then assembled in the final stage, ensuring both speed and accuracy throughout the entire packaging line. Once both the matchsticks and the cardboard boxes are complete, the two production lines converge at the packaging stage. The inner trays move along a conveyor, while the matchsticks are evenly spread across a vibrating feeder and guided inside by air jets and mechanical sweepers. When a tray is filled, the outer sleeve slides tightly over it. Each sliding motion is checked for proper alignment, and any box that jams or shifts is immediately removed from the line. Even at high speed, the entire process is closely monitored to ensure each matchbox feels solid, slides smoothly, and holds a neatly arranged row of matches inside. From the raw timber to each slender matchstick, and finally to the compact cardboard box that holds them, the journey of a single matchbox is a synthesis of precise mechanics, carefully selected materials, and meticulous quality control at every step. Simple as it may seem, it reflects an entire streamlined production system, one that turns out millions of identical products each day with an almost perfect level of consistency. If you'd like to explore more hidden processes behind everyday objects, leave a comment and follow the upcoming videos from The Factorin.